good morning, everyone, and welcome to Pineville First United Methodist Church, and welcome to the Pat Contemporary Worship Service. My name is Thomas Bonner. I am the worship leader here at the Pat. Um, it's so good to see everybody sitting in this place with us. Everybody worshiping with us in person. Um, and I know we still have those. We still have those coming in. We still have those finding their seats. And it's also so good to know that we are reaching out virtually via our live stream. So I know there are those who have been with us this morning who cannot be with us physically in this place, but you are still here with us at this time. Um, and we are just so blessed that we have the ability to reach out to you and that in, in this world, in this time where you can, you can reach out virtually and you, we have access to so many things. But we're so blessed to know that you're spending your Sunday morning time of worship here with us in the path and at PFUMC. But church, look, I do know that there are still those coming in, settling in, finding their seats, um, getting their donuts, getting their coffee, all that good stuff. But it is 9 o'clock, and we have all gathered together this morning to worship. So in, in just a second, we're going to begin with a time of singing and a time of praising. But first, I would like to just enter into this place and bait this place in this time and all of us worshiping together with a word of prayer. Father God, I do thank you for all these gathered here, those sitting in these seats, um, those sitting on, on a couch at home, those making a drive making the trip, but just everyone who can hear my words right now, everyone join your worship wherever they may be, I thank you that for this day and this hour, we are all gathered together here, come to find you waiting for us, and to hear what you would have to say, to see what you would do in our lives and in this place this morning. So Father God, it's it's just my prayer that as we all come together for for those of us who, who call Pommel First Nine Methodist home, um, for those of us that come in here into the path week after week, that that this would not just be uh, another Sunday, this this would not be just another one one of those things we do in a busy schedule. But Spirit, that you would move in this place, Father, that you would have your way. And that you would do something here and that something would happen, happen here in this place with us that we take forward from this room, from this place, from this time today to go bring it out to a world that's just so desperately looking for you. Well, Father God, bless our time, bless our voices as, as we sing, bless our hands as, as we raise and bless the words that you're going to give to, to Miss Leslie and to our speakers and, and to our pastors this morning. And just, God, make us present like your spirit is already present moving in this place this morning. Father, I love you. And it's in your son Jesus' name that I pray about this. Amen. Well, church, I would invite everyone to stand with us. We're going to start with a time of singing and a time of praising this morning.
Amen, church. Amen. Um, I invite everyone to be seated for just a moment. I have some announcements. I want to let everyone know what's what's going to be going on coming up in the life of our church this week. And, and as we approach closer and closer to, to Holy Week and Palm Sunday and, and Easter time. Uh, Wednesday Night Live is continuing this week. The meal this week is hamburgers or hot dogs with fries. Also this Wednesday, we will be having our extravaganza. Wednesday evening, beginning at 545 under the Narthex Portico. So kids, come out for extravaganza. We're going to be hunting eggs, seeing the Easter Bunny, all those fun things. On Friday, March 31st at 11 a.m. is Share the Blessing on the Road. That will be at the Pine Grove Apartments. Share the Blessing on the Road at the Pine Grove Apartments, March 31st, 11 a.m. And next Sunday, that is April the 2nd, um, the Chancel Choir will be performing their program, Oh, What a Savior, at the 11.30, at, at the 8.30 and 11 a.m. traditional services. And in all three services next Sunday, we are recognizing Palm Sunday, so there will be a procession of palms in all three services, 8.30 here at 9 o'clock, and at 11, we will be observing Palm Sunday at all of those services. Um, but right now, if uh, any of our kids would like to come up, I believe we're going to have a moment of children's time with Miss Leslie this morning. We don't have as many as usual. We have a, our big group of confirmation class and are, are all worshiping together at the 11 o'clock today, and that takes some of their families with them. So that's why we're a little lower. Can y'all come closer? I don't know. I don't think. I had not in a while, have I, Ellen? I don't think so. Oh, I have? Oh, she's telling on me. <laughs> so, all right, can I talk to you girls? And of course I have girls on the day I want to talk about something gross. Can I talk about something gross for just a minute? Are you ready? Okay, so what happens when you have allergies or a cold? You get all stuffy, right? Your nose gets all stuffy and kind of snotty and ooh, that's gross to talk about. But it gets all stuffy and snotty and, and mom sometimes will help you when you're little and what do you have to get? You get a tissue, right? To blow your nose, right? Or you take medicine uh, to clear things up, right? And sometimes your parents have to help you clear things up. Well, that kind of reminds me of something in the Bible. I want to talk to you about um, Jesus' ministry when he was here on earth. And you think, what does snot have to do with that? Well, bear with me and I'll tell you. All right. So during Jesus' ministry, Jesus, y'all are laughing at me today. <laughs> um, during Jesus' ministry, he um, went around trying to clear things up. You know, he kind of cleared things up. He taught us how to keep our focus on God, and he wanted us to pay more attention to God than other things here on earth. He talked to us about sharing God's love, and he healed people. So he kind of cleared things up, right? It's kind of like when you take medicine or when you blow your nose. He cleared things up. So the, the reason he did that is because, guess what? It's hard to focus on God when you got all the other stuff in the way, right? So just like it's hard to breathe when you're all stuffed up. So it's kind of like Jesus came and brought a big old tissue and said, we got to clear this stuff up, right? I think that's kind of cool. I think that's cool to think about. So the next time you blow your nose, think about what can I clear out of my life? Come on, y'all. What can I clear out of my life to help me think about Jesus more? Can you think about that just a little bit? I think it's pretty cool that he came to clear things up for us. All right, let's pray. Dear God, thank you. Thank you so much for sending Jesus. Thank you for helping us clear up our stuffed up lives so that we can pay better attention to you every day. Amen. Well, amen. Thank you, Miss Leslie. Um, church, look, I also want, want to say, want to make sure I don't forget this, um, just some good housekeeping this morning as the service is going on. We do have our green registration pads there at the end of our aisles. I would invite everyone to please fill those out. That is just good for us. It lets us know who has been in worship with us at what time and in which service. And if we do not already have something like an email address or a phone number, and if you feel so glad and if you feel comfortable leaving those with us, that would just give us another way that we can reach out to you 
as your church family here at Common First United Methodist Church and the Path of Worship Service. Which also makes me think, and I would be very remiss if I did not say this, if we have anyone who is just visiting with us this morning, just passing through, or if this is your first time stepping into worship with us here at PFUMC or here in the Path, we are just so blessed and we're so thankful that you are spending your Sunday morning time of worship here in this place with us. But with all with all that being said, church, I would invite us all to, to stand again. We're gonna keep we're gonna keep on singing and, and worshiping and praising this morning.
You may be seated. Good to see everybody. Let's bow in prayer. Father, we thank you for this song that reminds us of the cross. Lord, what it means in our lives that you have sacrificed everything for us. And during the season of Lent, Father, help us to remember that every day. And especially on this day, this day of worship when we come together. Lord, help us to remember your sacrifice for us. But also look forward to the day of resurrection, Easter Sunday, when we're reminded that you had the victory over sin and death for us. Lord, we embrace that today. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. We have a special privilege today uh, to have Steve Blunt with us here. And you, most of you know Steve. He's a regular attender of this service. And he is an affiliate member of this church and also First United Methodist Church in Alexandria. Uh, you probably know that his father had a strong connection with this church, Dr. Henry Blunt. He was on staff here for a while and he painted beautifully and wrote beautiful poems and blessed the church in so many ways and served as a, a minister here uh, to, to help with those who are sick and in the hospitals and in other ways. Uh, Steve is currently living here in central Louisiana and works in the forest industry here. Uh, he's done some interesting things. He wrote a book called The Spirit of Success. He also established Buddy Ball Sports, a special needs children's uh, sports program. Uh, he attended Louisiana Tech University and where he also played baseball and football. And he's still playing baseball, softball anyway. So it's always good to have a hobby. Steve, come and share with us this morning from your heart. Well, good morning. Well, what a beautiful day it is. Even if it is going to rain later today, it's a good day to be alive. I appreciate being here. And I want to start off first by thanking Pastor Steve for the honor and privilege of speaking to you here this morning. Uh, I don't know if any of you have ever worked with Pastor Steve before, but he's a real inspiration to be around. I think our church here in Pineville is fortunate to have someone of his caliber. I look forward to working with you, Pastor, in the months and perhaps years to come. So thank you for doing all you do. As Pastor said, my name is Steve Blunt. I know several of you personally, but some of you may know me through my father, Dr. Henry Blunt. My father served this church proudly for years. He, he loved this congregation. In fact, he wrote three books. And the third book that he wrote was called My Story. And on page 73 of my story, you'd be surprised the number of people that are in this sanctuary right now and that are members of this church who are profiled there, people who he loved and adored uh, as he served here at Pineville United Methodist Church. And I cannot tell you how meaningful it is, too, for me personally to hear the stories that many of you have shared and come up and, and, and share so many good things about what my father meant to you in your life through perhaps weddings, funerals, marriage counseling, or his ministry. So thank you for sharing that. I never would have known those stories unless you had shared those things. And I appreciate that. I appreciate it very much. Um, I'm sometimes amused by the interesting parallel that people draw between my father and I. Uh, this uh, one very nice lady came to me when I joined this church. I joined Ellick at the same time. And at that time, she came up to me after the service, and she says, you look just like your father. And I thought, well, that's a good thing, I hope. You know, my father's not a scary-looking guy, so hopefully that's a good thing. And then she looks up, and she points, and she says, and isn't it interesting that both you and your father's hairline is receding at the exact same spot? <laughs> well, whether I liked her or not, that was my dose of daily honesty. <laughs> I didn't know if I should laugh or cry when she told me that. I, I want to share a story with you. Some people here at this church knew and heard this story years ago. They said, be sure you share that story about your mother and father in Natchitoches. So I'm going to share it because it is intertwined with what I'm talking about here today. And in 1972, my father was appointed to the Natchitoches United Methodist Church. And Natchitoches is a great little town. You know, it's got Cane River running through the middle of it. And, Christmas Festival and Clementine Hunter and all the history, just a wonderful little town and great. And, and Cane River for a kid, I was 12 years old when we moved there, was just a huge playground. And um, 
And one of my hobbies and interests back then, uh, particularly back then, it still is to this day to some degree, but I used to love snakes. Now, most normal people don't love snakes, you know, but I love to study them and just, I was fascinated by them, I, by, by the fear that they invoked and just everything about them. And uh, my father decided to get a camp just barely north of Natchitoches, a few miles, and we would go there on Saturday afternoons, and we would go there to visit. And, uh, and we went there one particular Saturday, and I came up with the brilliant idea that it was time that I have a pet snake. So I decided without any of my family knowing that I was going to go out and catch that snake, and I did. I caught a three-foot king snake who had beautiful markings all over it. And I decided that's my new pet snake. So I decided that's going to be it. And I know the snake's nerve endings are on the outside of his body. So when you give a snake a, a quick little tap like that, he'll freeze up. And uh, you have got to gotta get him just right, though, not to hurt the snake, but enough to get it to freeze up. I said, I'm going to get him to freeze up. I'll put him in the car, and we're going to take him home. And we have to aquarium him back home. I'm, we're gonna, I'm going to have a pet snake. Well, that's exactly what happened. But uh, Daddy was just about ready to call us home to get into the car, and so I went out there and I popped that snake. Boy, and I put him under the front seat of the car, and we all piled in. My daddy was driving, I was in the middle, and my mother was sitting to my right. And uh, as we're going home, of course, as luck would have it, the snake decided not to cooperate, but instead to come back to life. And it decided that its point of egress was going to be up the inside of my mother's pants leg. You know, there are certain moments in life that are just frozen that you remember them. You know, you remember the details of certain things. And that certainly was one of those moments right there. And uh, I learned three important things at that point. So the first thing I learned is my mother was single-handedly responsible for inventing breakdancing at that moment. <laughs> She had her hand back here and her feet were up there. I had never seen moves like that. It was wonderful. The second thing I learned, and Thomas and the band would certainly appreciate this, my mother, I had no idea she had such a beautiful octave range. Those were high notes like I had never heard before. That was wonderful. And the third thing that I learned that day is that I had no idea that a whipping could last that long. Whereas that was my father's contribution. <laughs> but isn't it a wonderful thing, the memories that some things evoke? And hopefully in your life, you had those people who served as an inspiration, served by Christian example. For me, it was my mother and father. And my father was a lot of things. But without question, he fully demonstrated something to me that I can only hope to emulate for the rest of my life. He taught me so many lessons, but the one thing that he really taught me in the latter years of his life is what is meant by the term unconditional love. Unconditional love, how the world would change if we all practice that. There's a reason I shared with you that snake story this morning, and the reason is this. Isn't it amazing the path that our lives take sometimes. The unexpected things that come out of the blue that we did not see coming at all. Here we are, going along life's path, thinking in some cases that we have it made, and then here come the interruptions, the problems, the chaos, many of which are self-inflicted. And then there's so many definitions of the things that happen in life. It could be a loss of a job, a dire health report, a financial setback, perhaps being imprisoned in one way or another, or maybe losing a loved one, someone very, very dear to us. Here we are going along life's path, and all of a sudden we're dealing with a major storm of life. When I was seven years old, my father was appointed to the Welsh United Methodist Church. Welsh, for those of you not familiar, is in the southern part of the state between Lake Charles and Lafayette, a little ag community there. And in Welsh, there was a lady there that us youth, all of us kids, called, we had a nickname for her. We called her the Candy Lady. And the reason why we called her the Candy Lady is because every Sunday you could depend on, she had a purse full of candy. 
Every week, every month, every year, she had her candy with her. And us kids, we lined up right before the service began. It looked like some type of children candy communion as we sat there. And we got a piece of candy from her, and she put it in our hand, and we ran back to our parents. I don't know how thrilled our parents were about us getting hyped up on sugar right before the service, but I tell you what, from a kid's perspective, it was fantastic. We loved it. And you could just see what the joy of giving gave her, as she gave each one of us. I remember her expression every time, and she just, she loved giving us that candy and making us so happy. One particular weekend, I told my father on Saturday, I said, Dad, why don't we go fishing tomorrow afternoon after church? And he looked at me and said, no, I, I can't. I have a funeral today. And then he looked back at me, because he knew he knew I would recognize her by her nickname. And he looked at me and he said, the candy lady passed away. Now for a seven-year-old to wrap his head around the enormity and finality of death was overwhelming. All I knew for a fact was I felt very, very bad for her. That next day, that service had begun at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And it was one of those days in Louisiana that we all prayed for. Beautiful spring day. They had the church windows wide open to let the spring air in. And I was riding my bicycle by the sanctuary. And as I rode my bike by, the organist began playing a song. And I remember getting off my bike, sitting there in the grass outside the church, and just listening. I'm not ashamed to admit, I sat there and I cried woefully, grievously. And that song, that song was speaking to me. It was calling out to me. The song is a familiar Christian anthem. A mighty fortress is our God. A powerful song with a wonderful melody and lyrics. That song is seared into my being. It became very important to me very early on in my life. Years later, my father recognized that song's importance when he added it to the funeral service of my mother when she passed in 2006. That seven-year-old boy is now 62 years old. He enjoys that song and its meaning just as much today as he ever did. Everything it represents to me. The question is, what inspires you at the deepest level? What memory, what song, what person touches your spirit, your soul? What touches you in the most meaningful way? Knowing Jesus Christ is with me 24-7 through all of my good times and my bad is the greatest source of joy I have ever known in my life. I know, I know he will not forsake me and he will never forsake you either. Not long before my father passed, he was interviewed by a local journalist or a local paper. He made a lot of quotes as the man asked several questions. But one quote I want to share with you because it had a lot of meaning to me and I hope it will resonate with you. And he said this, I have learned for a long time that life is a gift and I have tried to unwrap it carefully and prayerfully, enjoying it to the fullest. I say amen to that. No, this journey that we are all on called life doesn't always go as we plan. But through all of life's ups and downs, particularly during the challenges, it is that undeniable joy bank, that joy that is inside each and every one of us, that can only come from God. It gives us the ability to persevere in the most difficult of days. And what about those dark times? those unexpected challenges that truly challenge our faith, our courage, and our trust. 
You know, happiness is a fleeting emotion. But joy, joy is the foundation of support that I need to carry me through, that we all need to carry us through our problems in life. And not just survive life experiences, but to thrive through our problems, just as God intended. Every person in this sanctuary, and every person listening, and every person we encounter is carrying some type of burden, some level of hurt or discouragement or failure. Challenges that sometimes seem overwhelming and in some cases insurmountable. Friends, please, please don't tell me that you can't overcome the challenges that you face. I and so many others are a living testament of what it means to overcome, to persevere, to maintain a positive frame of mind in the, the most negative of circumstances. Certainly there are those who have it much worse than I, but whatever your level of challenge, for me, adversity has taught me that all of the credit and all of the glory goes to God, my rock, my redeemer, my companion, my friend who is with me, comforting me, reassuring me, showing me that things will work out. And they will work out for you too. I want you to know that no matter what it is that you're dealing with in life, God is with you every step of the way to guard, to lead, to inspire. If you're anything like me, I beat myself up when I falter, when I don't measure up. Why is it we're so hard on ourselves at times? Quoting my father again from his book, A Bit of Honey, he asked this question, why do we stumble on something behind us? If we're still stumbling on something, then it's not truly behind us, end quote. I have learned that sometimes we can be our own worst enemy. I say we need to let the past be the past, learn from it, but move on, putting negativity in the rearview mirror and never looking back. If God can cast our indiscretions into the sea of forgetfulness, then the message is clear. Paul tells us in Philippians 3.13, something that is also very clear. He says, the one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Remember this, folks. When God is at the center of our lives, we worship. When he is not, we worry. Another way to look at it is a quote from Mark Twain. And if you're familiar with Mark Twain, he had an interesting way with words. And this quote is no different. But he's spot on when he tells us this. It ain't what you don't know that got you into trouble. It's what you know for sure that just ain't so. The Bible reassures us with, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. God is the anchor of our soul. As Martin Luther once wrote, a bulwark never failing. Isn't it a wonderful thing that God blesses you and I with the gift of resiliency, of true perseverance? It is incumbent on each and every one of us to realize just how strong we are. It is God that empowers us from the inside to face those storms of life, those inevitable challenges that come our way. What is it in life that is holding you back? What is it that makes you experience doubt? Peace of mind is a beautiful thing. And real, deep, spiritual peace of mind can only be achieved by knowing and depending on God. 
I've learned many lessons in this life. But one thing I can honestly say is that God's love and God's peace is not defined by our circumstances, but instead by our faith in Him. Once we learn to relinquish control, and for us men particularly, that can be an issue, a challenge sometimes. But once we learn to relinquish control and seek His presence in all we do, a peace comes over us that can only be of a divine origin. With an open mind and an open heart, we realize as we drive down life's path that miracles do exist. A change of attitude, a spiritual awakening are just some of the examples of the miracles of life. When love triumphs fear, when love triumphs fear, that's when we experience true peace of mind. When bitterness is replaced by forgiveness, that's when we become closest to living Christ-like. When love rules, have you ever noticed that all else falls into place? Remember this, God is love in its purest form. Sometimes we just have to live above the circumstances of life. The high road is a road less traveled, it was once said, and it is true. It is a narrow path paved by God. In Proverbs 3, 5, it tells us this. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding and always submit to him and he will make your path straight. I appreciate a challenge just like the next guy, I suppose. One challenge that I challenge you and myself to is that finding those moments of pure joy. Those moments of joy that go into our heart, that go into our joy bank, that give us the strength we need, even in the face of adversity. You know, anyone can feel joy when things are going great. But what about those tough times? Those times when troubles come? And they will come. They will come. What does joy mean to you now? For me, joy has brought me through some of life's toughest, and I mean toughest moments. My father died in October of 2020, and I couldn't even be there with him. I couldn't hold his hand. I couldn't tell him I loved him. You want to talk about tough? What times have tested your joy bank the most? Folks, the thing, the thing that has brought me through some of life's toughest moments. I mean tough moments, was knowing, not thinking, knowing God was with me every step of the way. He is with us in every situation of life. He even told us, I am with you now and forever. The Bible further encourages us with, be strong and courageous, do not fear, for it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He would not leave you or forsake you. Friends, we don't praise God just to feel good. We praise God to do good. Our goal should not be just a, a feeling, but instead a continual awareness of the reality that God is always present. Another important lesson that life has taught me is that one of the greatest tragedies is not necessarily death, but life without purpose, life without meaning. Many times, our most profound and intimate experiences of worship will likely be in our darkest moments. 
I heard a saying one time that didn't really resonate with me when I first heard it, but boy, does it mean something in the last few years of my life. It has really become profound, and I hope it means something to you. And the saying is this, you'll never know that God is all you need until you realize that God is all you've got. It was once said that God is seldom in a hurry, but he is always on time. And through God-given patience, I believe that. In fact, it was John Wesley, someone you may have heard of before, who once said a quote that's worth quoting. He said this, Do all the good you can by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can as long as you ever can. You talk about a can-do attitude, John Wesley and his brother Charles, for that matter, certainly possessed that. And John Wesley was a confident man. It is the, a God-given confidence that each and every one of us shares. We know with God by our side, we can handle anything. Take a moment and look back at your own life. And see how God has helped you through profoundly difficult times. It is true that our circumstances may change in life. But always know that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he will never forsake you. Certain family and friends might disappoint. But on God we can always depend. This is the basis of of our Christian confidence. We know we are not alone. As I said earlier, he told us, I am with you now and forever. But isn't it also gratifying when we have certain family and friends who we can depend on, who support us and love us, and we do the same for them. A friend of mine once told me her definition of the word friendship, and I think it's worth sharing. This was her definition. She said, friendship is the true, friendship is the true friendship is the deep commitment for the welfare of another, regardless of circumstances. Which tells us what? That support and love are choices, our choice to make. Another profound lesson that I have learned is that a thankful attitude opens a whole new world of possibilities. Thankfulness should be second nature in all we do. It diminishes the negative and it amplifies the positive, the can-do attitude that we all need to excel. And not just exist in life, but to thrive in life. Gratitude revives our hope, our longing to be better, to do better, and to serve better. And it's sometimes tough to give thanks during challenging moments. And thankfulness is not some type of magic formula. Thankfulness is the language of love, the miracles of love. Love holds no grievances. Love is pure. Love is real. True love through thankfulness is peace of mind. Miracles, think about this, miracles occur naturally as expressions of love. The real miracle is the love that inspires them. In this sense, everything that comes from love is a miracle. And miracles are not always evident to the naked eye, but those who live by faith can see them clearly. And we learn that thankfulness takes the sting out of adversity. That's why we're encouraged to give thanks for all things, good and bad including loving ourselves. And loving ourselves does not mean to grow in ego, rather, it means to find greater humility as we recognize our weakness and our absolute dependence upon our Creator. Self-love is allowing God to flow through us. When we learn to give thanks regardless of feelings, then God blesses us with true joy, regardless of circumstances. It is the light of God's presence. 
that removes that sting of adversity, even the sorrow of losing a loved one. In closing, my father had a way with words. I was one time, many years ago, my wife and I were arguing about something, and I was convinced I was right. And uh, knowing my father was a minister and a marriage counselor, I decided to sit down with him, and I did. And he and I sat there, or he sat there listening as I went through all these long, arduous details. And the whole time I was speaking, he never said a word. He just sat there and nodded and listened carefully and patiently. And when I was finally finished with my I am right dissertation, my father leaned forward and this is what he said. He said, well, son, you have a choice. You can be right in your own mind or you can be happy. Which do you choose? It wasn't what I wanted to hear. He was absolutely right. We can go our own way, the way we think is right, or we can go a whole different way way of happiness and joy, the divine way that God is leading us. And as tough as it is to admit, life, life is about forgiveness, humility, understanding, thankfulness, and love. Those are the true keys In the beautiful poem, Desert Dorado, it begins by saying this, Go placidly amid the noise and haste, and remember what peace there may be in silence. Silent meditation nurtures our body, our mind, and our spirit. That is where true strength is derived. Praise God for all he has done for you. Even in the face of gloom, God is omnipotent. He shows us how to overcome. Don't waste your pain or your suffering or any adversity in your life. Allow those things to challenge you to become better, to become stronger, to better serve God and others. Even the Bible encourages us with this. May the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort comfort us in all our troubles. Folks, there will always be those who are far less fortunate than ourselves. We just need to remember that God is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. All praise be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Dear God above, thank you. Thank you for the blessing of life, the blessing of family, friends, and good health. Thank you for instilling within us a pure sense of joy that no one can ever move from our spirit or soul. A joy that is with us through every situation of life. Thank you for blessing us so richly and deeply. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Steve. Well, maybe you have a decision to make in response to God. Uh, in response to what Steve has said about joy in your life. Let's stand as we hear this song of invitation, which will also be our last song. I know some of you need to get to Sunday school. This 
message today. Lord, we pray that as we go from this place that you will walk with us as we continue this Lenten journey with the joy of the resurrection standing in front of us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 